self-defense tips to essential items that you must have for every camping trip, here are 10 things you must do to keep yourself and your loved ones safe during every hike or camping trip. Without further ado, let's get started. Number 1. Go with a group of friends if you can. This may sound like a no-brainer, but it's safer to be in a big group than to be alone or with just one person. You're less likely to face any trouble when you have more people with you. It's just how it is. There's nothing wrong with camping by yourself or with another person, but if you're in a big group, you have more backup in case something goes wrong out there. You have more eyes to watch out for things. You also look more intimidating from afar. Anyone who has bad intentions will think twice when they see eight people, four guys and four girls, and they'll move on. In short, go with the group for safety. Number two is to bring your dog with you. Some dogs can protect you better than others, of course. A big Doberman is a lot more intimidating compared to a tiny Chihuahua. But hey, even small dogs can hear everything. They can alert you if someone or something is near your camp. They'll growl or bark and warn you. And if you want to scare off people, having a bigger dog roaming around your campsite can do the trick. They'll think, no way, I'm not going near that thing. So, for extra protection and intimidation factor, take your dog with you during camping. Number 3 is to inform someone of your whereabouts and your expected return time. Make it a habit to let at least one person know what you're planning to do and tell them where you are going, as well as when they should expect you to be back. That way, they can check on you if you don't contact them after a certain period of time. Sometimes, you will not have cell service when you camp, so a useful device to get is a Garmin InReach Mini. It uses satellites to send text messages from anywhere. It's a bit expensive, but it can be a lifesaver. It tracks your location and lets someone else know precisely where you are. It's worth getting one if you do this kind of stuff often. And for number 4, keep your campsite free of food. Don't bring any food into your tent. Never do that. Keep everything as tidy as possible. Wash your dishes right after you eat. Take out your trash right away. Don't leave any food lying around. That's what attracts the bears and other animals. Anything that smells, really. From sunscreen, lip balm, stuff like that. They say don't bring that stuff into your tent either. A lot of places to camp usually have bear boxes. So you can use those to lock up food and other stuff. But if you're smart and don't have food and other things scattered around, Chances are a bear or a mountain lion will go somewhere else and not your campsite. You don't have to worry too much about a small bottle of shampoo or something in your tent when you know other people around the campsite have stuff everywhere. It depends on where you are and how careful you need to be about that. But as long as you're smart and keep your campsite clean, you'll be fine. Number 5. If you need to park your car for a long time, put a note on your car window. Something that says, Hi guys, we'll be back soon. Just went to the bathroom. See you in a bit. And then write two more names like Bob and Joe or something. Because imagine someone comes up and snoops around and then they'll see this note. And they think, oh no, there are several guys here. They said they'll be back soon. They just went to the bathroom. How many guys do you think are there? You can even say something like, hey fellas or hey boys. Make them think you have a bunch of big guys in your group and they could come back any minute. Nobody knows. The note could have been written any time. Nobody knows when the people who wrote the note are expecting the other people to show up. It's just too confusing. You're going to see that and you're going to say, No way. I don't know who's coming back. How many guys? How long they've been gone? They won't touch your stuff. This is a really good one. You can also add something like, Oh yeah, we left the ammo at the site. We'll be right there. You can go crazy with it. But just simple is good too. The more realistic it might be, the more vague it is. Just simple, like, what's up boys, be back in a bit. Just went to the bathroom, see you soon. And then write two more names or something. Simple, yet useful. Number 6. Stay away from big holiday weekends. This is to reduce the number of people and drunks at the campsite. Usually when we go camping, we want to enjoy the peace and quiet, not hear other people. We want to listen to birds, wind, and streams. Also, try to avoid campsites that are close to a big city. Drive an extra hour or so to get away from the crowd. 
Most people from that city will go to the first campsite they see on the map. And that's the thing. Most people have a few days off around a big holiday weekend. That's when they think, let's go camping for Memorial Day or 4th of July. And that's fine. But that's also when it's crowded. Drunk people can be annoying and disruptive out there. They can be more dangerous than the bears and other animals. So stay away from big holidays and big cities, as you should have a quiet time out there for sure. Number 7 is to keep your valuables hidden from sight. Whether in your campsite or in your car, if you have to leave some important stuff in your car, you can cover them with a dark sheet. With the tinted windows in the back, you couldn't see anything. It just looks black inside. And also, if everything is under a sheet, someone might think it's not worth stealing. It could be anything under there, like paper towels. It's more risky for someone to try and find out, as opposed to if a guitar was just lying on the back seat. They would say, I want that, and take it. For number 8, a loud whistle or an air horn that makes a lot of noise is a good thing to bring. It's often a good idea to bring these loud whistles on your backpacks when you hike. They are super loud and they could work on an animal or person or for signaling between two people. Like if it's in the middle of the night and someone is bothering you at your site or a bear shows up, you could maybe scare an animal away with such a loud noise. Or you could let the whole campsite know that something is wrong. Yeah, okay, it is a bad thing that you would wake everyone up. But you're alive, right? People are going to come and see what's going on and help you out. It's something you would hope you'd never have to use, but you can really alert everyone and warn everyone about a potential danger. Number 9 is if you're camping solo, bring two camp chairs and pretend you have company. You can put them next to the fire when you go inside your tent. Anyone who sees your camp will think there are more people in the tent. It's a pretty simple yet effective way to discourage would-be looters to think that you're alone. It's pretty similar to putting the note on your car. A little bamboozling wouldn't hurt, would it? And finally, for number 10, a med kit is essential to have. After all, you never know what might happen. If a pre-made med kit is too expensive for you, you can make your own med kit with large gauze pads, big tape rolls, and ice packs. Also, you need stuff for big injuries. That is pretty important. A lot of people just buy a small med kit and think that's enough. But that won't help you much if you really get hurt. Sure, a band-aid might work for a small cut or something. For serious stuff, the point of the med kit is to help you get to the hospital, not to fix broken bone. And you might be far from a hospital, so the most important thing is to try and stop major bleeding. But like I said, a lot of gauze and tape are needed for that. A band-aid wouldn't do much unless it's a tiny cut on your finger. So, bring a med kit just to be safe. This video is not meant to frighten you at all. It's just meant to help you be ready and try to avoid some dangerous situations. People just want to have some good time with their family, be outdoors, enjoy nature. They're not looking for any trouble. It's just that humans are humans and sometimes things happen. And animals are animals too. So, stuff happens and it's better to be prepared for that. Which of these tips will you be doing for every camp and hike moving forward? Are you already applying some of these tips? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like the video and subscribe while you're at it. Until next time, happy trails!